Oi oi rap bags, it's Jade with the Sunday Survival Show, the recap of everything you need to know what's going on this week. Small land, new clip showing off, Rust, big problems for PC, and again, underwhelming console support. Planet Crafters outlining their plans for the future, and Generation Zero has got another free update that's just gone live. Not forgetting also a little look at Nightingale, another piece of lore info, and more looks at Unreal Engine 5 and survival games being made in it. So let's go, it's the Survival Show. The Rust players are angry, and I'm not talking about console, although they're still pretty angry. It's actually PC players who are a little bit upset this week with the update that went live, adding zip lines and a whole bunch of other improvements to Rust, as well as the overhead railway system. The problem is, it's been pretty unstable. Multiple reports all week long, creators and players complaining alike on social media that the update is just a bit broken. The devs have even publicly apologised for the state of things, and they've been steadily hot fixing it as much as possible. I would say this is a one-off for Rust. It's not usual for them to have these kinds of problems. Last, I would say, year and a half, they've not had that major issues. Of course, they've got their public test branch servers, which you could go and try out if you own a copy of the game, unlike on console, where you have to actually pony up even more money if you want to test out new features. So although they were probably a bit earlier with this update and maybe not tested it enough, I'm pretty confident they'll get back to normal and your FPS will return to a decent standard by next week. The zip lines do look really cool, I've got to say, it adds a whole new element to the game. I can't wait to see what some of the PC creators can come up with using this. Don't know if it really makes logical sense though, using a zip line next to a electrical wire unit? Yeah. Next you'll be telling me you can put your finger in a plug socket. So while PC Rust got a whole bunch of new content, and yes, maybe some issues, how has console Rust been going lately? I'm sure they've had equally as many good updates, no? Of course freaking not, they're just shilling their skins as they always do and with just the minorest of bug fixes. It's coming soon to the one year anniversary, I'm going to be having a special video taking a look at Rust on console, why I give them as hard of a time as possible and pretty much how much of a failure it's been on console. No one can argue the amount of content that's gone into this game over last year just has not been good enough and certainly the lies they've spouted have absolutely ruined this game's good name. Maybe one day console could be as good as PC and maybe I'm going to grow a 12 inch willy. Generation Zero has added a brand new base assault game mode to its game. Pretty much as you start succeeding one area to the next, you'll come across these bases that get increasingly harder depending how much trouble has been caused. They've come so close to making this a full blown survival game and I just really wish that one year they actually make it a focus, have it as a separate mode instead of just getting bits of random loot, at least allow us to pick up food, maybe get some water from some natural resources, it would make this game so much more appealing to a lot more fans. Their early roadmap for the rest of the year doesn't look like it's going to be adding what I wish for but it does look like they're going to be carrying on supporting this game with more content going forward. Planet Crafter launched a couple weeks ago and it's been really received well. I've seen a lot of creators playing it, it's got some great reviews. And although it's lacking a little bit in terms of maybe more interaction or some sort of dangerous components, a lot of you guys seem to enjoy the more chilled atmosphere of basically turning a dusty red planet into something green and lush. The devs have put out a roadmap and talked about their vision for the game and I really applaud them. They're actually being super clear about what this game is going to be and what it's not going to have. Effectively, they want the game, the final game, to be a 30 hour to 60 hour relaxing experience about terraforming the planet. There'll be a bigger map, they'll have secrets and story of the planet, inspiration from real science but not being super hyper realistic, and they do want it to have some replayability to it. Guaranteed to be in that 1.0 version, they're going to have a bigger map, at least 50% bigger, one vehicle, a complete story arc and some procedural story elements. Terraformer stages, breathable atmosphere, insects, fishes and amphibians, more environmental threats, more replayability options and lots of obviously quality of life elements and optimization. Each update is going to add new technology, special events and increase the map size and of course more secrets. And this is where I applaud them. What it won't have is big monsters and aliens, guns, fighting and violence, interplanetary roaming, spaceship piloting, really complex systems and completely accurate science and realistic and next-gen graphics. That may sound like a bit of a rubbish deal, but I just like the idea that these devs are not promising the world. We've seen it so, or too many times at least, with other games promising the earth and never actually being able to deliver or taking absolute years. 
This is made by literally just a husband and wife duo. It's fair play, they've set the game out to be something chilled. And although I'm not a big fan without maybe some of these other elements that have said they're not gonna have, I can still appreciate that it is gonna find a place amongst some of you guys. They've also outlined that they won't be able to add multiplayer or procedural maps. They may possibly look at it again, but it won't be until after 1.0. I guess it all depends on how well the game's done all throughout its early access. They do plan to add more content after 1.0, but that's still probably a year to two years away, and they're gonna hopefully release content big updates every two to three months. It's a fair play, go and check it out, it's cheap as chips. I have covered the beta and the demo before on my main survival channel, and I did show you guys the first two hours in just 13 minutes on my second channel, so go and check that out. I've been doing a lot of small land coverage on my second channel, so you want to see how progress has been going, absolutely make sure you're tuning in for them videos. But we did see another clip today showing the importance of tree bases. It does seem to be a big focus. When I spoke to the devs before, they've said that you will have bases in trees, as well as being able to build bases elsewhere. I took a look at the seasonal content, and we took a look at an interview most recently with one of the devs. But this is another brand new little clip showcasing how you'll be able to glide from one of your tree bases all the way down in the snowy, wintry conditions. It does look really cool, no pun intended there. I do like this armor set as well. It looks very unique and different from a lot of other games out there. Still no word or news about when we're gonna be seeing this come out, but I'm hopeful that it will be very soon. Still no news about a release date for Nightingale either, and this is the other game I'm super excited for, but we do get another Compodium entry. They're hyping up the game a little bit with these little looks into the story and lore of Nightingale. This one talks about the portals and gateways between worlds. Apparently natural and fey portals have existed for a long time, but humans have only just about gained access to it most recently. The ancient fey worshippers were the first humans to attempt realm travel in England. The druids learned at the feet of the fey to conjure their own short-lived gateways. In the 1500s, Dr. John D refined these druid rituals to keep portals open indefinitely, and this is how the first transept arches were made. Modern humanity used some blah 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 engines to access the realms, but the fey magic underlying it remained the same. That is until the pale came and the portal network collapsed. There are lots of lore there, and hopefully this will all become a lot clearer as we get more info about the game. And I can reveal I've been invited to take part in some focus testing, taking a look at Nightingale. I'm not allowed to tell you what I saw or spoke about, but I can let you guys know that yes, I'm gonna be one of the places you need to be tuned in for, for lots of Nightingale content in the future. Soon as again, we get any news, any previews, I'll be there to tell you guys about it. You may have caught my live survival vol show with Raz speaking to Nikatus, the creator of Valguero and Fyodor. He was also talking a lot about Unreal Engine 5, the improvements and differences it was gonna be making. Of course, Ark isn't the only survival game being made in Unreal Engine 5. Derelicts is currently in the process of changing over from Unreal 4 to Unreal 5, with a predicted release date in early access of next year. And Sky Game is also doing something very similar. So this is why there is a little bit of a dearth in games actually maybe releasing this year. A lot of developers will want to show their game in the best way possible, and the Unreal Engine 5 gives them an opportunity to add and improve so much more. So it's probably worth taking a bit of extra time to do the work necessary, and then hopefully get it out to people in the new engine next year. That's why the rest of this summer and the rest of this year it is still going to be pretty light. Not that every game is made in Unreal, but a lot of these big open world survival games definitely take advantage of Unreal's capabilities. If you've not heard of Sky or Derelicts, I did do a video a couple weeks ago taking a look at the progress of both them games as well as Retreat to an End. So go and check out them and see what I think about the release dates and what kind of game they're all going to be eventually when they do release. And there we go, that is the Survival Show recap this Sunday. I've been messing around and toying about with different formats. Bottom line, it does look more and more increasingly likely these types of shows just don't do that well on YouTube anymore. Not for me, anyway. Every video that I've pretty much done separately has done a lot better, even if a lot of them are pretty short. So I may just go back to doing that again and maybe only keeping one Sunday show going, hopefully giving you a recap of everything you need to know. We'll see how it goes though, but yeah, that's the kind of feeling it's been better just giving you the news as and when about that one particular game. So no matter how it's delivered though, whether it's in one video or separate, I'll always be there to give you the survival news lowdown. Until next time, Ratbags, laters.